Well, hello. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I'm Tobias, and this is Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Stick around. It's going to be a fun one. I picked up a, another one of those um, Queen City Abalone series knives. Uh, these are the new ones from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They now own the um, the uh, trademarks to both Queen and Queen City. Uh, they've made some knives in the United States. These also have made a few knives in China. The Abalone series are Queen City knives that are made in China. Um, and I talked a little bit about them because they are very similar to the uh, Rough Rider knives, but I think they are a step above the Rough Rider knives, um, especially in the Avalone series. Um, and it, this was the uh, Mini Canoe. I did a video on this already and talked about um, how, how much I really like the Avalone in it. And uh, in that video, I mentioned I was going to pick up the little lockback, which I think probably even called a cub lockback, because that's what this knife was called in the uh, Rough Rider lineup. And it is very similar to the knives in the Rough Rider lineup. Um, but um, I think uh, there are a few differences in these knives that I would uh, that I thought I would point out so that if you are a person who collects uh, the uh, Rough Rider cub lockbacks, uh, I've got quite a few of them. Uh, I just thought I'd point out a few little differences between this knife and the ones by Rough Rider. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, for those completely unfamiliar with these little knives, let me show you just how big they are so you got an idea. Um, the overall size of these knives is, uh, when closed, it's under two and a half inches long. It's, I would say it's like about two and um, three eighths of an inches uh, closed. And then when you got it all the way open, it is just that four inches long. But if you notice, um, you've got a handle area for the knife because of the finger toil, the front finger toil. You've got a finger area for that knife that is about two and a half inches. Uh, so that's basically the way it's intended to be held with your hand right up next to the, uh, the the cutting edge there. And the knife actually falls into the hand quite well with the center of it getting right into the palm. So it's a really nice little small bladed knife for your uh, uh, cutting pleasures here. Um, overall cutting edge, let's go with the cutting edge, is right at one and a quarter inches long. I guess supposedly you could say that the blade length is one and a half inches, but really when you consider uh, the knife is really designed for being choked up on, uh, to consider this portion of the tang or the choil uh, part of the blade is kind of nonsensical. I guess if you really feel like you need some safety, you can grab it back here. But quite frankly, it feels much more uh, secure and much more comfortable in the hand when you actually do have that finger up in the toil. The only time I could see not having your finger in the toil is when you're bearing down on the top of the blade like so. And I think that's the way this knife is really designed for cutting. Um, you, you know, like so for little cuts and everything. Or down here so that you can actually bear down and press down hard. Um, and obviously, really, what it's good for is basically uh, cutting boxes and things of like that. Uh, but it's a more substantial blade than what you're going to find on a peanut or a small toothpick when it comes to cutting. And obviously, this one looks really great because of the abalone. So it's a perfect little knife for any kind of a um, small chore that you might need when you're uh, kind of all dressed up and you're looking for a really nice looking knife to, to throw into a uh, um, a suit or a tuxedo or something like that or you know your Sunday go to meet and clothes or whatever this is that's really what this knife is designed for it's a little bit of a functional pocket jewelry so now I mentioned that this knife is different than the ones that came from um Rough Rider, and they it is slightly different, and uh, in some ways you might say that well, the Rough Rider is uh, has a little bit more finishing going on with it than this one does, and is that's especially the case when you look at the blade. Um, notice the Rough Rider here up at the front 
has a swedge going on with the blade. Notice the swedge there. Um, this is the one in the Black Bone series. Um, and you got a nice swedge there. And from what I can tell, every Rough Rider one will have that swedge going on there. This is the uh, Copper series. Uh, I really need to shine the copper up. I know a lot of people love the patina, but I like it shiny. Um, and you also notice that both of these have a pinched bolster. Now, the Queen City, it has a ringed bolster, but there's no pinching going on there. And if you notice with the blade, there is also no swedge going on there. So uh, that is one of the ways they actually held the cost down on these knives. Now, you're asking why in the world are they holding the cost down uh, on a Queen City knife? The, this knife cost 15 bucks. And this knife costs $24.95. So this knife costs a good $10 more. And it has less finishing going on with it. And well, the bottom answer of it is, is the quality of the abalone in this knife. The, the quality of this handle material is just superior to any other kind of abalone I have seen on a knife in these price ranges. So that's why... Um, you see less finishing on the blade and things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, I still think even with uh, the lack of a blade swedge and uh, uh, a pinch bolster and everything, that this knife is definitely worth the, uh, the more money that you're paying for it simply because it's in the Queen City lineup. If this knife would have been in the Rough Rider lineup, in order to get the things like the swedge and the pinching on the bolster and everything, they would have had to uh, uh, jack up the price also. So yes, um, because they own both trademarks. They own the, the Queen City trademark, they own the Rough Rider trademark. Um, can they charge a little more right now because of the Queen City trademark? Possibly, but because they're they're also the jury is still out on uh, SMKW and what they're going to be doing with Queen City. A lot of people are skeptical of the of the brand as it's coming out of China. So I still think you're getting a pretty good deal on these knives uh, at the twenty four ninety five or the uh, twenty nine ninety five. I think for the uh, canoe. Now, uh, this particular one I got, I noticed a small problem with it uh, right there. If you see it, let me pull out a bit. I can actually kind of catch right there um, the uh, back of the back lock. If I'm running this way, it's smooth. When I'm coming back this way, I can feel it. Um, on my Rough Riders, well, first of all, the, the back lock is much tighter on the Rough Riders. Uh, but it is also smooth. So this one is smooth. This one is a little proud. I can feel it here. It's definitely proud. I can catch it that way. This way it feels fine. But I can feel it coming back this way. So um, I guess that part of the fit and finish is about the same. If you notice here, you see the pins on the uh, Rough Rider. The pins on the... Um, on the uh, Queen City, they are probably hidden. Um, if not, the handle is glued in place. These are probably glued and pinned. This one might have hidden pins. It looks like the center pin is definitely there. I can barely see it underneath the abalone. Uh, but I'm not sure if I can pick up on the uh, pins on the back there. So I know the the uh, back spring pin is in there, but I'm not sure about the back pins. So uh, that is an issue, and that is something I pointed out on this one, that I can definitely see the the pin for the uh, back spring, but otherwise the pins are hidden or they're just not there at all. Uh, any case, um, really well made and well knife, uh, well made and a really nice knife. Blade is definitely tight. There's no wobble going on there. Um, like I said, I think it's easier to press down on this lock and close it than it is on the Rough Riders, but uh, the lock is definitely there. It's very strong and tight, so very happy with it all in all. Uh, and uh, I also mentioned before, am I going to buy more of them? Um, I 
do not know. I might go ahead and grab the uh, canoe, but I really am not interested in grabbing the peanut, the uh, the small toothpick, and I definitely don't want the uh, the uh, large or the uh, the small um, what's it called lady's leg knife. And matter of fact, the lady's leg knife is probably the knife that is preventing me from picking up more of these because I'm afraid if I pick up another one, I'm going to want to get the whole set and I really don't want to waste 25 bucks on a lady's leg knife. Kind of tired of those. But in any case, uh, I will link to the uh, video with the uh, mini canoe so you can see more about this, uh, all of the patterns in this series. Uh, and I will leave you with this and uh, close with a, another slideshow featuring um, these knives and uh, some other knives uh, from the Rough Rider lineup for comparison. Talk to you again soon. As a uh, postscript to this entire video, I should also point out that they have made mention that all of the uh, Queen City Abalone Series knives have a half stop. This particular knife does not have a half stop. The, uh, the lockback does not have a half stop. All of the other ones do, however. And, uh, well, I've said many a times that I don't plan on picking up the other four, primarily because of that uh, lady's leg knife. Uh, but Maybe I should tell you what knives I would have liked to have seen in a series like this. And that is some of the knives you just don't see too often coming out of a Rough Rider. And then it would have seemed more like a Queen City kind of thing. And one of them is um, the little neck knife that is an actual four series. They have it in the Brian Yellow Horse uh, series that they did. Um, and then also in the um, in the Stonework series. And it was also in Zombie Neck and... Uh, and they also made one in uh, a jig brown handle. But I think this would have been a nice knife to have in the uh, Queen City uh, knives. That would have been pretty cool in abalone, a little neck knife with an abalone handle. And that would have been pretty cool. Um, the cotton sampler, the, the small cotton sampler. Everyone is loving the little cotton samplers now. So this would have been a, a better option to me instead of the ladies like knife. Uh, to have a, a mini cotton sampler 
in the Queen City line. Um, they had an old 3-inch lock back that I really love, and you don't see this knife too often. This would have been a great one to bring back just for the Queen City lineup because, uh, well, it's a pretty cool little lock back. It's got great lines to it, and uh, that would have looked really good in abalone also. And finally, uh, one that a lot of people always talk about is uh, they have this uh, small um, locking barlow, a single blade barlow, uh, two and three quarter inches long. And this would also have been nice instead of having the uh, um, the uh, canoe. I would have liked to have seen this uh, little locking barlow instead. And they're all smaller, so you don't see them too often. And uh, uh, because of their size, uh, you would have been able to get the um, the uh, abalone on these scales with not too much of an issue because, uh, well, it fit on the uh, canoe. Um, these would have been kind of cool. In any case, that's the uh, six knives that I would have done in it. But then I'm not uh, SMKW, and uh, they know what sells better than I do, but those are the six knives I would have gone with instead of the six that they went with. So... If you think I made a better choice than they did, let me know. Otherwise, just tell me to knock it off and let SMKW uh, say what they're doing with their knives because they know better than I do. In any case, uh, that's my postscript on this thing. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again soon. Ye doggy, I told you it was going to be a fun one. Sure hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a comment and give it that big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and <coughs> ring that notification bell and go out there and tell your friends there's another episode just around the corner. Thanks a lot for visiting. Really appreciate you being here. Talk to you again soon.